Okay, this might be a hot take. Pee pee, poo poo. Okay, so you've probably been seeing a lot of punch needle crafts. I know they're blowing up on Twitter. I hopped on the bandwagon and it's a really great craft to do at home. And it's cool to make rugs, but what's really fun about punch needling is that you can turn them into really anything you want. So today I'm gonna show you how to make a punch needle rug into a pillow. This is less of a tutorial and more just of how I do things. I'm not a teacher, I have no qualifications. But yeah, let's make, let's make a pillow. So for materials, you're gonna need monk's cloth. This is a pretty loose, meshy fabric. This is what we're gonna punch on. And I bought mine on Amazon. A frame to stretch our monk's cloth on. I made this out of some cheap wood that I screwed together with metal brackets. It's pretty easy to make yourself. Yarn, you can use whatever colors you want, but for this design, I'm using yellow and a beige. A punch needle, obviously. Uh, the one I'm using is from Amazon and it's got an adjustable length, but we'll get into that later. A backing fabric for the back of your pillow, and a pillow insert. Mine is a 14 by 14 inch polyester fill insert, but you can use whatever you want. Just make sure that your design is the same size as your pillow. So I started with stretching my monk's cloth over my frame. It's like stretching a canvas. If you're a painter, I'm not, but I've been told. And the most important thing here is just making sure that it's all stretched tight and evenly across the frame. I did this with loose staples and a hammer, but after I watched this footage and realized how dumb I looked, I actually ordered a staple gun off of Amazon, so that's what I would recommend. This is the design I'm going to be using today. It says PP. Um, we're just grasping for serotonin whenever we can find it at this point. And I just got this printed at FedEx. The guy wasn't really weird about it, which was cool. And you don't have to get this printed, this is just the method that I use. And then I just take that template tape it onto my frame, and trace it with a light box. And this is where I realized I'd messed up. I messed it up a couple times just because I was tired, long day. But in the end, you're going to want it to look like this. So we've got our frame, and then on the back side we've got our design face up, so that it'll be backwards when we trace it. And that's because we're going to be working from the back side of the piece, so we want it to be backwards. And I was worried about tracing this one line because it wasn't showing up, it was too close to the edge. And then I remembered that I'm just making a pillow and not performing brain surgery, and nothing matters. And it'll be okay. And now our frame is ready to punch. Wow, she looks great. So I just started punching with the beige, and I was just filling in that whole area because I'm only using two colors for this design. There are so many tutorials online that I feel like if you wanted more detailed steps, you could find them. So I'm not going to go super in-depth here, but basically, yeah, I'm just filling in that area. And it's important to have enough slack, because if you don't, then the loops will get pulled out of your monk's cloth, like here. So, um, yeah, always have a lot of working yarn pulled off of the ball right next to you. And top tip number two is to work with that big hole you see in the direction that you're punching. That's kind of the guide. So you want that to be facing towards the direction that you're going. It's kind of like giving someone a hand poke tattoo, that up and down motion. So if you've ever done that, it's kind of similar. You want to make sure that you're punching every two to three holes, because if you go closer together, it might buckle and not lie flat. But if you go further than that, you might have gaps where you can see the cloth through your design. And additionally, you want to punch all the way through, so the base of the needle where you're holding it is what touches the cloth so that all of your loops can be the same length and all look the same on the other side. Also this just takes a long fucking time, you know? Like, get a good Netflix show going, hunker down, you can do it. Patience is key. I just have the needle on the second shortest setting so that still fills it in and gives us a nice pile, but we can go longer when we do the letters. And I just kept punching and filling around the area around the letters until I was all done with this beigey color and then we're gonna do the letters in a different color. So hold on tight for that. For the letters, I'm just moving the needle up to the next longest setting. It's not the longest, but this will give us enough of a contrast between the lengths of our loops and this will make our letters pop on the back side. 
I thought of it. I thought of the joke. Uh, this is what Harry Styles was singing about when he said golden. It's about P. It's a P joke. So for the type, I'm just going in little strokes basically to fill out that space. I'm starting from the outside and working my way in. And for the thinnest parts of all the letters, we're going to want to have the same amount of strokes going through them. So like here you can see I already have two and we're going to build it up to four. And those are going to be the same on every letter so that they all look even when we flip it over. So here I am going in with the third and eventually I'll squeeze in a fourth and that's just to make sure that we have the same density on all of our letters. I was listening to the Dateline podcast while doing that, but I yeah, I highly recommend something that's just kind of mindless that you can listen to for hours on end. And I just kept working around all the letters. The E was easy, I just did it four times, and then the P twice. So once I had a system for each of those, it was really easy to repeat. And I just did that until our whole square was filled in. And once we're all done, it's haircut time, which means just cutting off all the loose ends we've been pushing through. And this is kind of when you can see it all come together into one final piece. So I've never used this Mod Pod spray to seal a piece before, but I thought I'd try it out. Um, it dried pretty nicely, I don't know how well it's gonna hold, but yeah, I'll try new things. My senior superlative in the yearbook was Biggest Daredevil, and if only they could see me now. Once that's dry, I take it off the frame, I remove the staples with a knife, uh, do as I say, not as I do. I don't know what I would recommend, but not a knife. There she is! Then you want to trim around the edges of your piece. I just used this ruler to trace it out because it's two inches wide. Um, that's kind of as close as you want to go to the actual piece. And there's the front of our pillow. For the back, I got this super cute yellow floral fabric. If your pillow is the same size, which is 14 by 14 inches, you can get away with just buying a piece of uh, pre-cut fat quarter, which is just a little piece of fabric, which is what I did. Iron those. And I'm ironing a quarter inch fold along one of the long sides of each piece. So along that fold. Then I'm going to pin all of my pieces together, right sides together. I'm lining up one of the backing pieces with the seam we made towards the center. And same on the other side with our second piece so that the hems overlap at the center. I'll insert another diagram. And we're just going to pin all the way around the outside. And then with a zipper foot, this is important so that you can get as close as possible to the edge of the piece. I'm just going to sew all along the outside of that square. And when you hit the overlap, you might have to mess with the foot a little bit uh, just to make sure it doesn't get stuck. Here's a better angle with the light turned off, just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm pressing the top layer down so I can see where the edge of the punch section is so that I can sew along the edge. Then just one more trim so we have about an inch of seam allowance left. Flip it inside out. And we've got our pillowcase. The last step is just to squeeze that pillow in there. The 
this is our final pillow. I'm super happy with it. This will be on Etsy, and this is my first YouTube video, so like and subscribe, I guess. I also designed a poopoo one, so comment if you want to see that. And I'm still learning how to teach, if that makes sense. I really don't know how to explain things that I'm doing. It just makes sense to me. I'll have all my social media stuff linked below. My Etsy is Bad Egg Crafts. Also, my staple got arrived while I was filming the outro, so next time.